I'm an artist. Uh, my name is Leonard Kozianski, and uh, welcome to my studio. This is my studio. In fact, that's my latest painting, the one I'm working on right now in the background. Uh, but today I want to talk about one of my uh, recent pictures, one they did a couple years ago, called The Witching Hour. And uh, it's a 30 by 40 inch canvas. But it all started with a trip to Florida. We were invited, my wife and I were invited to Florida by my brother and sister-in-law, and they had rented a house in Florida during the month of February. It's very warm in February, and it was a great vacation. Florida <clears throat> is the land of swimming pools and jacuzzis. And this house had a swimming pool and a jacuzzi. Now to me, one of the great things about uh, swimming pools at night is how when you turn the lights on in the pool and everything else is dark, it has this sort of like glowing blue, almost magical aura to it. It's, it's, you know, it's very romantic and very kind of mysterious at night as that glow of blue goes up into the air. <clears throat> um, this painting is called The Witching Hour, and The Witching Hour is from midnight until one o'clock. And, uh, and so when you're in a pool in a backyard at night, it kind of has that kind of witchy feeling to it. Well, when I got back to Annapolis, uh, I was lying in bed one night, and I closed my eyes, and it was almost like God had turned on a slide projector inside my head, okay? Uh, it was like, I, was, I just saw it. I saw this image, and I had to paint it. And so the next day, I got out my sketchbook, and since the idea was already fairly complete in my head to begin with, um, I just started drawing in my sketchbook with a black big ballpoint pen uh, and developing the idea. These drawings here, they're about five by eight inches and they represent you know, my original thoughts or ideas about this picture. <clears throat> I continue to work on the painting or on the idea, you know, trying the different variations in the composition. Um, in this drawing here on the right, uh, I'm drawing the leaves and the oranges. Florida is a land of swimming pools, jacuzzis, and orange trees. And so here I am, I'm sitting on my back porch in Annapolis with my sketchbook and my pen, drawing these orange trees, these the leaves and the oranges, and creating sort of this flow in the leaves that I want to be have framing this picture which I haven't really even started yet. So I got, a, I got a drawing that, to me, looked pretty good, and which I thought could become a painting. So I put a pencil grid over the top of it, and that allowed me to blow this idea up, this image up, to a 30 by 40 inch canvas. But it's still, it's pretty ambiguous, and a lot of details need to be added to it. Like, what about that figure walking through uh, the doorway. So I can to do, continue to do some drawings. Um, here's a pen and ink drawing. No, it's a figure drawing. A figure, uh, a woman uh, walking out of a house at night, seen, uh, you know, from above, illuminated from the back, you know, backlit, casting a shadow in front of her as she comes out of this lit house into this dark exterior. That's hard to do. It's hard to do when you're just doing it out of your head uh, from imagination. And so uh, I have many years of drawing at the Cleveland Institute of Art to thank for that, for being able to do that. In fact, we had to draw from the figure for two years. The first two years at the Cleveland Institute of Art, you had to do drawing one day a week from nine in the morning until four in the afternoon. It didn't matter whether you were designing cars or clothing or ceramics or painting. Everyone had to do live drawing for two years. Well, this is the finished 
painting. This is the, the finished image. Um, and here we have three people. Uh, now to me, I, I know those people. But to you, it's important that you don't know who they are. Because a painting is a symbol. It's something that you should be able to project yourself into. And you should be able to see yourself in all three of those figures. Many of us have been in jacuzzis. Most of us have been in swimming pools. And all of us have walked outside from an illuminated house into a dark backyard. And But here, this is in Florida. You know, this is this sort of this tropical land that we visit in the wintertime because it still is warm and sunny down there. And this is a surreal painting. It's not realistic. It's a, a mixture of the appearance of things with my feelings about them, with my memories, with my imagination of the scene, all mixed together. In the foreground, we have the figure in the hot tub, in the jacuzzi, and it was a challenge because, uh, you know, how do you paint that frothy water? And how do you paint a figure that's sort of half in and half out of the water? You know, you've just got oil paint, colors. How do you do that with colors? Got a figure swimming. You know, how do you paint a person who's swimming? If you've never, you know, you don't have a model that's going to sit there and pose for you. You have to do it out of your head. And then we have this figure walking out of the house, holding some drinks as she comes out. Uh, into the backyard. Florida has orange trees. And people have them in their backyard. And this place had orange trees in the backyard with oranges on them in February. Now the, 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 the rind on the orange turns brown in the winter. And it doesn't look like it'd be good to eat. But I plucked one of those oranges, brought it in, cut it open, and tasted it. It was the most delicious orange I've ever tasted in my entire life. It was sweet and orangey, not like any orange you're going to get in a grocery store. It was wonderful, kind of magical and mysterious and tropical. Wouldn't that help inspire the painting? So, you know, I'm using oil paint, and oil paint's this physical substance, so the way I created the oranges, I wanted the oranges to have a kind of like a glow to them, almost like they were illuminated from within. And so what I did was I, I painted the light sides of the oranges with pure white. And I let that dry. I gave it a, you know, I, I dabbed the white on to give it that kind of pebbly texture. Then when that was dry, I glazed thin layers of reds and oranges and yellows over the top of that to give it that glowy quality which you can't get in any other way. It doesn't come across in a digital picture or a picture in a book. You really have to see it in person. Well, this is the finished picture. Um, and it has that, that witching hour, nighttime quality to it, which I really like. It has that tropical feeling to it with the blue light coming from the pool and the jacuzzi and the warm light pouring out of the house into the backyard. Now, I'm a professional artist. Um, this is not my hobby. Uh, it's important for me that these paintings go out into the world to enrich the lives of others. That they, like children, go out into the world and make their own way in the world. That's important to me. So the first step on that journey as the painting goes out into the world is I send it to a serious art gallery. In this case, the Jay Willott Gallery out in California. And they took and they hung the painting in their gallery where it was seen by hundreds if not thousands of people. And then they sold it to a collector who brought it into their home, into their family, were to seen by their family and their friends and will be for years and years and years. And it will be seen by thousands of people. And it will enrich the lives of thousands of people. And that's its purpose. Now, I have children. 
And they look at my numbers. They come to YouTube, they look at my numbers. And if they're not good, they say, Dad, you don't have enough subscribers yet. So please, help me. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. And that'll make my children happy. We want them to be happy. And it'll get them off my back.